Okay, hi class. Sorry I'm not here today. Um, I'm going to record the lesson, and then your homework is going to be that worksheet. Um, I'll go through this more in depth tomorrow. We'll have an extra day for proofs, um, but I just kind of want to introduce it to you over this video, okay? So if you could get up the notes that say proofs of triangle congruency day one, okay, we're going to go through that, okay? All right, and at any point you feel like you need to pause this video um, to, like, catch up, or if you want to go back, feel free to just go back, okay? All right, so here's what I'm going to say, is yesterday we talked about reasons for congruent triangles, which are listed over here, okay? I said that you have to um, label your diagram in order to have these exist, okay? Okay. That's really key in understanding this, okay? Because otherwise, you're just kind of floating on water, and that's not possible, okay? Okay, right, so here's what I'm going to say is you have reasons for congruent triangles. You also have these reasons for congruent angles and reasons for congruent sides. The way I like to think of it is as if these two add up to give me one of the reasons for congruent triangles, okay? So let's go through each one of these, okay? The first one that we are always can be written is if it's given to us. So if that given says, like, given certain things are congruent to other things, we can just write the reason as given, okay? The second reason for vertical or for congruent angles is if you have vertical angles. Vertical angles exist at that bow tie, so remembering that is really key. We can also label those. Okay, and the third and final reason is if we have an angle bisector, okay, it has to be strictly stated. So I'll show you an example where um, that occurs, okay? Okay, <coughs> okay so for um, congruent sides, you have reflexive property is when you have a side congruent to itself or it's shared, okay? We've seen that yesterday. And then the second reason we can also use for congruent sides is a midpoint, but it has to say the word midpoint, otherwise it doesn't exist, okay? All right, so I'm gonna say this now. These are gonna be a little confusing, but it's just important to make sure you're labeling your pictures and you make sure that you have like reasons that make sense, okay? All right, so here's what I'm gonna start off with. For number one, okay, it says given PQ is congruent to RQ and RS is congruent to PS, we wanna prove that the two triangles RQS and PSQ are congruent to each other, okay? Okay, so I gave you all the statements for these, and you're just going to have to tell me the reasons, okay? So let's start off with this first line. The first line always, always, always should be given, okay? If it is not, then you are doing it wrong, okay? So that's given, but we are also going to label these on our picture. So anything I circle, you label, okay? So I'm going to start off with PQ is here, and then RQ is here. I'm labeling these two parts as congruent to each other, okay? Then looking at line number two, I go back to the proof. I say RS is congruent to PS. That's your other given here, so you can write given in that reason, okay? And I'm going to make sure I label these on my picture. So RS, I'm going to use two tick marks here, and then PS, two tick marks here, okay? Now, here's where it gets interesting, okay? The third line, it says QS is congruent to QS. We can agree that those two things mean the same thing. When you have the same thing written twice, that automatically means you have reflexive property, okay? So, like, if I say, like, angle Q is congruent to angle Q or QS is congruent to QS, that's reflexive property, okay? And how I would label that in my diagram is like we did before. It's that shared side in the middle, so it's going to be here. So then finally, once I'm proving congruent triangles, that's where you want to use one of these reasons in the right hand above, okay? So I'm going to label my diagram, okay? So first off, I have a side here, a side here, then go to two tick marks, side, side, and then finally side, side. So this is congruent by S, S, S would be my reason, okay? And that's all I have to do, okay? All right, let's try another one where we have angles, okay? Okay, so for number two, okay, make sure you label what your givens are. Sorry, let me just erase that, okay? So what I'm going to do is it says CG is congruent to CS. The first reason always is given, okay? I'm going to make sure I label those parts on my diagram. So it's going to be CG is here, and then CS is over here, okay? Then for number two, it says M is congruent to J. That's your other given, so you can write it as given, Okay? And I'm going to label those two angles. So angle M up here 
and angle J down there, okay? Then through that third line, here's where we're looking at, okay? It says angle MCG is congruent to JCS, okay? So what I'm looking for is where's that angle located? Well, all you have to do is take the middle letter, okay? That's where the angles are located. So MCG is at this angle over here, and then JCS is at this angle over here. If I look at what I just labeled, it's that bow tie triangle. So those are going to be vertical angles. Okay. And that's my reason. Okay. Okay, so then finally we have the two triangles being congruent in each other. That's where you want to finally label what parts I have. Okay. So up here I have an angle, so it's going to be A. Then I have an angle after that. Then I have a side. That side does not fall in between. So let's check to make sure the other pattern holds. You have an angle here, an angle, then a side. So this one would be congruent by angle, angle, side. Okay. Okay, let's try one more like this, okay? Okay, so this one's going to be introducing midpoint, which um, is going to be important for one of our reasons, okay? So let's start off with the easiest one. Angle J is congruent to angle D. That's going to be given, okay? We're going to label that on our picture. Always, always, always label an angle, okay, and a side. So angle J and angle D are those two angles, okay? Line 2 says R is the midpoint of JD. It's exactly how it's written up here, so that's also a given. There's no way to label line 2, but in a second you'll see um, how we're going to use that. Okay, Okay. so how do I use that? Well, it's the fact that R is the midpoint of that line JD. Okay, We need to think about like what does the midpoint do? Well, it's halfway in between, Okay, which means it breaks that line into two congruent parts so that... JR is congruent to DR. So these two parts here and there are congruent. What we want to do is if we see a vocab word above, that should be our reason for our next line. So that's going to be definition of midpoint. Okay. And I relabeled it on my triangle, so that's good. Okay. All right. For line four, it says JRI is congruent to DRS. Again, you're going with the middle letter, so it's at angle R. Those two angles exist here and there, okay? And we want to know what types of angles those are. They're the bow tie angles. They're vertical angles, okay? So then finally, when we're proving the triangles are congruent, okay, you want to look at what you have. You're labeling A's and S's. So you have an angle here, a side in between, then an angle, then you have angle, side, angle, okay? So that's how they would be congruent is your final reason. Okay. Okay. Number four is going to be a fun one. Um, if you don't understand it, I'll go through it on Wednesday, but just to make you understand it. Okay. Okay. So let's start off with this. Okay. JK is congruent to LM. So that's going to be given. Okay. And I want to label it on my picture. Okay. So you're going to have two overlapping things. Okay. JK is going to be this line here, okay? And then LM is going to be this line here, okay? Okay, then the next line says JKM is congruent to LMK. That's also given, okay? I'm going to tell you now this is hard to see, but you're going to go JKM is this angle down here, okay? And then LMK is going to be this angle over here, okay? For the third line, it says MK is congruent to KM. Well, MK and KM use the same two letters, so they mean the same thing, and they're the same side. So that's going to be a reflexive property. Okay. Okay. And we're going to label that. So MK and KM, it's that line there. Okay. Now, here's where it's going to get tricky. You have to show how they are congruent. Here's what I'm going to do is I'm going to outline one of the triangles, so like here. Okay, the triangle on the left. Okay. If you can see that triangle, you have a side here, you have an angle, and then you have a side. Okay, That other angle, it doesn't matter because it falls in the other triangle. So we're labeling it as side, angle, side. Okay, That's how they would be congruent. So it's a little hard to see, so if you need to outline it better, that's fine. Um, otherwise, um, you can just kind of look at the picture. Okay. Okay. We'll do two more and then we'll be done, okay? 
Okay, so these last two are a little bit longer. Okay. Um, I'm actually going to skip over number five. I'll come back to number five tomorrow because it's going to deal with something that uh, we haven't seen in a while. But if you want to give it a try, you can. Okay. All right, let's jump to number six. Okay. All right, so number six, it says, given angle R is congruent to angle T, S is the midpoint of U or QU, and angle or QR is that line means parallel to ST. Okay. So you're going to start off with R is congruent to T. Okay, so that's going to be given, and I'm going to make sure I label that on my picture. Okay, so angle R and angle T. Okay, second reason is also going to be given. S is the midpoint, but now we want to use that to help us out. So if S is the midpoint of QU, okay, that's going to break QS and SU into two congruent parts. Look at what I just wrote. Okay, that's my third line. So my reason is going to be from the vocab word above, definition of midpoint, okay? Now here's where we're going to add on to this, okay? This one's going to be a little trickier, okay? So it says QR is parallel to ST. That's given, okay? There's really no way to label parallel lines, but if you want to, you can um, just like kind of draw arrows like that on them, okay? We want to use that to help us out. So the next line says RQS and TSU are congruent to each other. RQS is this thing over here, and TSU is this thing over here. Now, I don't know if you guys can recall. Think about it this way. From unit two, we had two parallel lines. We had all those types of angles that formed. And I don't know if you guys remember, those two are like your leapfrog effect. When you have parallel lines, those two are known as corresponding angles, okay? So we can say they're congruent because corresponding angles are congruent. And then finally, sorry, I had to correct this. Just cross out what I had and then replace it with this, okay? It says R at RQS and TSU are congruent, okay? We want to look at how those two are congruent by, um, you're looking at what I have. So it's an angle, then you have an angle and a side at the end, angle, angle, side. So these are congruent by AAS, okay? Okay, so I know I went through that kind of quickly, but here's what needs to be done, okay? Is you have that worksheet, okay, that says proofs of triangle congruency, a congruency, okay, day two, or day one, okay? Try those two proofs, and I'll check them in tomorrow, okay? That's what needs to be done, okay? If you finish early, okay, check your work with other people. So don't just sit there and like, okay. And then also make sure that you have yesterday's worksheet done, which was the, um, what was that? It was the 4.4, .4, which dealt with like all the labeling of those parts, okay. And then we'll check in tomorrow, but that's what needs to be done, okay. Cool. All right, you guys can sign off now. If you're done, make sure you're working on the work. Have a good one. Bye.